Good morning. Welcome to the St. Genevieve Catholic Church and a special welcome out there to all our visitors and our listeners this morning. Today we celebrate the 16th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our entrance hymn is number 444 in the hymnal, Lift High the Cross, number 444. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Father Joseph Corelli. I'm a redemptress from Labori, Missouri, which is actually in the town of Barnhart, Missouri. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. <coughs> Lord Jesus, you have sown good seeds in all of us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are a patient God. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you alone can forgive our sins. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity, they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. <coughs> A reading from the Book of Wisdom. There is no God besides you who have the care of all, that you need show you have not unjustly condemned. For your might is the source of justice. Your mastery over all things makes you lenient to all. For you show your might when the perfection of your power is disbelieved. And in those who know you, you rebuke eternity. But though you are master of might, you judge with clemency and with much lenience you govern us, for power, whenever you will, attends you. And you taught your people by these deeds, that those who are just must be kind. <coughs> and you gave your children good ground for hope, that you would permit repentance for their sins. The word of the Lord. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, the Spirit comes to the aid of our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes with inexpressible groanings, and the one who searches hearts knows what is the intention of the Spirit, because he intercedes for the holy ones according to God's will. The word of the Lord.
be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to the Lord. Jesus proposed another parable to the crowds, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a man who sowed good seed in his field. While everyone was asleep, his enemy came and sowed weeds all through the wheat and then went off. When the crop grew and bore fruit, the weeds appeared as well. The slaves of the householder came to him and said, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where have the weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. His slave said to him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? <clears throat> he replied, No, if you pull up the weeds, you might uproot the wheat along with them. Let them grow together until harvest. Then at harvest time I will, tell, I will say to the harvesters, First collect the weeds and tie them in bundles for burning but gather the wheat into my barn. He proposed another parable to them. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that a person took and sowed in a field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, yet when full grown, it is the largest of plants. It becomes a large bush, and the birds of the sky come down and dwell in its branches. He spoke to them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed with three measures of wheat flour until the whole batch was leavened. All these things Jesus spoke to the crowds in parables. He spoke to them only in parables to fulfill what had been said through the prophets. I will open my mouth in parables. I will announce what was what was lain hidden from the foundation of the world. Then dismissing the crowds, he went into the house. His disciples approached him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He said in reply, He who sows good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed, the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. Just as weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all who cause others to sin, and all evildoers. They will throw them into the fiery furnace, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Our first reading encourages its readers to recognize what truly counts for wisdom in the world. True wisdom cannot be gained by mortal endeavors alone. It is a gift granted to those who seek it with all sincerity. 
The wisdom of God is seen not only in his creation, but in his management of human history in a mysterious way. It even appears in his skill of allowing evil. The advantage enjoyed by those who aspire to the wisdom only God can give include a meaningful life free from misguided and the limited thinking of the unrighteous. After life in this world, those who pursued the wisdom only God can give will enjoy immortality with God forever in heaven. The beginning or the essence of wisdom is humility before God, without which there is no true wisdom. The wisdom given by God has the power to save people. This theme is explored in the biblical narratives from the time of Adam all the way to the time of Moses. The wisdom given to Moses by God saved the, fifth, the faithful Israelites during the Exodus by providing them with food from heaven. This is evidence of God's gracious love. God's power is displayed through kindness and leniency. Knowing the weakness of human nature, God chooses to be gracious and forbearing. People can learn from their mistakes. If someone shows resistance to God's ways, God can rebuke them in various ways, which can assist in enlightening them to come to the truth. God seeks repentance rather than punishment for its own sake. Our first reading told us, your mastery over all things makes you lenient to all. In his providence, God can use the apparent evil that may attend us in life to some perfecting purpose. God's greatness can flower in an astonishing way out of our emptiness, our nothingness, and our littleness. Our gospel parables verify that God has the care of all, every situation, every circumstance, and every moment. Somehow weeds get sown into a farmer's field of wheat. It is agreed that this is the work of an enemy. If not immediately cut down, the weeds could easily take over the whole field of wheat and destroy it. Logically, the farmer's workers assume that the farmer wants the weeds pulled up. The farmer, however, says no. He wants them to grow side by side until the harvest time, and then the farmer will decide which are weeds and which are wheat. The wheat will be saved and the weeds will be burned. What happened to the farmer's field in our gospel story is still going on in our time. Unfortunately, there are evildoers the children of the evil one who sow weeds in the course of time. The weeds grow from the improper use of freedom, and they cannot be pulled up from the field because freedom cannot be eliminated. God made us free in order to make us worthy of God and heaven. In the field of our lifespan, we must be good seed by using our freedom positively 
and constructively according to the plan of God, the Creator, and the saving directives of the moral law. Our readings tell us that good and evil, the good seed and the weeds, live and grow together in the field of history until the end of the world, which will be the harvest. The world will end one day, and then the final harvest, the final separation, will take place between those who wanted to be good seed and those who chose rather to be and sow weeds. Certainly the weeds and their spread make an impression on us who strive to be good seed. However, Jesus affirms that the kingdom of heaven at the beginning, as small as a mustard seed, has grown and become a large tree, the tree of the church and the tree of grace, which invites everyone to the truth and welcomes all. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast hidden in the dough, which keeps goodness alive and makes it grow in our souls. The parable of the good seed in the weeds shows how God's creative and redemptive will is active in human history. And it also shows how our individual free wills are active in human history. In life's difficulties and complications, St. Paul wrote in his letter to the Romans, our second reading, the Spirit comes to the aid of our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes with inexpressible groanings. St. Paul tells us that the Spirit fills up what is lacking in our prayers to God. Our words are, now, are not as important as the deep desire of the, of the Spirit of God who lives within us. Let us ask the Holy Spirit's help, who indwells in each of us, to help us live the span of our lives as good seed in the field of history. Please stand for our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, to him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With confidence in our eternal Father's ability to hear our prayers, we present to him now our needs in the form of petitions. For bishops, priests, deacons, and all those entrusted with teaching the faith, may the weeds of confusion and doubt never enter the hearts of the faithful. We pray to the Lord. For our nation, our elected officials, and for our military men and women, may they be kept safe from all harm and be conformed to the image of Christ, the servant leader. We pray to the Lord. For our parish family, that the good seed of wisdom which the Spirit sows in our hearts not be choked off by the worries of daily living. We pray to the Lord. For our parish youth who attended this weekend's Steubenville Conference, that the graces they received will continue to impact their daily life upon their return. We pray to the Lord. For relief from the heat for those who labor outdoors and for the blessing of rain for our fields. We pray to the Lord. For all those who are burdened by sickness or any suffering, especially our homebound parishioners, that their perseverance in prayer will be a source of peace. We pray to the Lord. For our beloved dead and for those who mourn, that we will have renewed faith in the resurrection on the last day. We pray to the Lord. For all those special prayers and intentions we hold in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, we have presented to you our needs in the form of petitions, those that we have expressed aloud, and we also include all of those that are in our hearts. We ask all of our petitions in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. There will be a second collection today to go to the St. Vincent de Paul Society. As our gifts are prepared, let us sing number 251 in the hymnal, Loving and Forgiving, number 251.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel, so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity, and even fashion for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May you make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope and Robert our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed, brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. <coughs> Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy of you, and I am not my will, but only to say the word of
Let us pray. <clears throat> Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.